I'm pleased to know there's a reason why I don't remember people's faces when I, when I see them again, because I've had to delete them because I've met somebody else during the year. So when I worked on the plane this morning and I saw someone, I thought, you look familiar, what's your... And I realised it was Nicola Sturgeon, so that's probably... <laughs> <laughs> um, she was at the front, we were at the back. Um, thank you very much, that was very interesting. Um, our second speaker this afternoon um, also didn't provide the voice for Polish Homer Simpson um, from uh, Plymouth University, uh, David Fleming. Hi. Um, I'm going to start with a prediction and an apology. I've been suffering with a bad cold for the last week. I will cough. Um, it's just a question of how frequently and how badly. So uh, uh, hopefully that won't be too, too disruptive for you. Um, my name is David Fleming. I've worked at Plymouth University for a gazillion years um, uh, in various roles. In the last couple of years, I've had the job title ID, IT Business Partner. And some of the thinking behind that, behind that and the, the business engagement team that I'm a part of is really what I want to talk about um, uh, today. I think the overall plan is a pretty standard one now, try and talk for half an hour or so and allow enough time for some, uh, uh, some decent questions. So um, I'm going to really just, uh, in fact, I'm going to start with a memory check. Who went to you, Sizer, in March? Does anybody remember that poster? <laughs> Thanks, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> um, did win an award. Um, but, but um, in a sense, I, I'm not going to entirely talk about that, but that, that, that contains a good bit of some of, the, some of the sort of techniques, tools, processes and cycles that we've tried to adopt and adapt in order to introduce a more explicit um, sort of uh, element of business engagement into the, um, into the uh, IT uh, team and process. Um, it, it actually ends with a nice um, meaty acronym, WAB, um, uh, and, and I'm going to talk a bit more about uh, what, what that does as a result of some of the lessons we learned in the first 18, 18 months or so. So, a bit of context and background. Um, in 2012, um, uh, IT at Plymouth changed um, quite considerably. Um, it changed from being a, a quite a traditional technology and business function processed set of teams um, into more uh, uh, what seemed to us at the moment, uh, at the time, to be a very new end-to-end -end process model. So within that, um, just looking at the main teams here, the basic um, sort of uh, pr proposition is strategy and architecture is about the day after tomorrow, is about planning for the future, is about looking, is trying to set things into a framework, understanding need, and making sure that we, we, we work to that. Solution delivery is about tomorrow, it's kind of about projects, it's about implementing new things, it's about actually making change happen over the next day or two. And service management is about um, supporting and managing what we've got right now, it's about today. Um, and, you know, that contains things like the service desk, the, the server and infrastructure teams and networking and, and second line support and people like that. So that's the overall uh, uh, premise. Now, within strategy and architecture, we've got kind of a I wouldn't call it a schism, um, it's two distinct uh, areas of the team. So we've got client relations, um, which um, I'll go and talk about, that's us, the business partners, the business engagement team. And we've also got architecture um, uh, involved. We've got an um, enterprise architect uh, uh, team, well, a couple of people. I'm not going to talk about that, I think there's a, uh, there's a session about that later in the, uh, uh, in the conference. And we've got um, what they would hate me calling them jobbing technical architects, people who work on the more day-to-day -day stuff um, and actually help out in a variety of contexts, be it w uh, with the client team, with projects, with, with, with all, all sorts of other issues. So we've got a, a, a dual focus there um, in, in terms of a business engagement and, um, uh, and, and in terms of trying to set technical uh, strategy and uh, ensure good practice. That's us. <coughs> We've got one vacancy, uh, which I hope, hope we've um, uh, filled now. Um, we operate as a team of BPs with various facial expressions. Unfortunately, the photographer on the day made me sit on a sharp stick, so uh, my, mine is a bit sour. Um, we, we, we've got a range. We, we've got business partners as, as, our, uh, as our sort of mainstream, as our job title, and we're supported with people who act as account managers working around uh, and, and doing support work around, uh, around for us. 
when we started back in 12 and 13, we had quite a lot of, of, of training. It was actually delivered by um, a company who basically consists of former IBM salespeople. Uh, it was quite interesting at the time, lots of role play um, and, we, and, and lots of jargon, jargon that was new to us uh, from, the, from the world of sales um, with, with lots of question marks around um, uh, uh, sort of how that would apply um, in our context, what, what were we actually trying to do. It's also worth noting that um, <coughs> HR, finance and the research and innovation divisions at Plymouth also have people who are called business partners. They do lots of similar things, but they certainly haven't, they haven't quite adopted some of the, some of the tools and techniques that, 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 that we've used. And it's, it's interesting when we work with them day to day to, um, uh, uh, to compare that. Um, in a sense, the way, the, the, the way you start, we, we, we've started to look at business, or we started to look at business engagement. I mean, and I imagine there are other universities that are doing this. Um, it's not, it's non-rocket science. Um, is that we start with the idea of, um, you know, as this table sort of illustrates, it, that, that we, we, we look at um, building persistent relationships with areas of the university. So in, in a sense, and again in sales terms, we adopt territory. So, um, and and the, the intention is that we stick to that territory for as long as possible. We change as infrequently as possible. Um, so for instance, um, uh, I'm heavily involved with the Faculty of Medicine and Dentistry with the Faculty of Health and Human Sciences, which includes nursing and other health professions with, uh, for, a, for a bit of uh, synergy there. And then just to top it off um, with the uh, sort of Directorate of Student Services. And we've all, if, if you were to look at that closely, which I don't expect you to, we've all got sort of groupings and clusters of, of territory like that. And we do avoid changing because there's value in the long-term relationship. Again, how do we do it? How do we, do, how do we approach uh, uh, engagement? Again, it's pretty much as you expect in some way. Um, we work closely one-to-one -one with, 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 with key stakeholders in the areas that we cover. We spend a lot of time talking to and meeting and building relationships with key stakeholders, deans, heads of school, associate deans, um, some key researchers in the case of faculties, or if you're covering a directorate, it's, it's about the key divisional heads. You know, so in my case, it will be the head of employability, um, uh, the head of uh, learning and well-being and things like that. So, so, you know, it's a lot of arranging a regular cycle of discussions and meeting and staying in touch and then actually answering people's questions when they happen to come up, even if, certainly at first, it's something that maybe they could have actually addressed to the support desk. Um, what we then do is also try and get involved and embedded in the, the main governance and management. So if there's a faculty management group, um, then we're involved with that, we, we sit in. It involves listening to a lot of stuff that isn't really related to IT. Um, and at first, you, you kind of have to get used to that, from where I came from anyway. But actually, in the long term, you start to see the value in, in, in the way that you, un you understand. You get involved in research governance groups. You, get, you, know, you try and make sure that the area that you're covering has a good way of actually collating and, and uh, discussing its, its collective requirements and issues around IT. Uh, whether it's forming a committee or, 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 or whatever. You, you, you get to, to be involved in key issues and become a sort of a go-to or a single point of, of, of contact, for, particularly for the more senior stakeholders, where um, otherwise they'd probably go very passive-aggressive on pati particular issues and, and sit and wait till the next big committee meeting before they uh, actually raise the next big lack of delivery or complaint about IT service. Um, one other thing um, that, 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 that we do is, is some of the major projects that IT is undertaking, we get heavily involved in that as well, making sure that both the project team understands what people are saying out there, but also that the people out there understand what's involved in the project, what they might contribute, um, and you know, whether or not they're actually, they, 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 they can add any separate requests to that sort of thing. So the intention is that collectively we'll sit in the middle understanding and influencing both within the IT organisation and out in the faculty or school or wherever it is that, that, that you have to be, uh, become a trusted partner. So what emerges from all of this uh, frenzied engagement activity? Well, people ask for stuff, basically. They ask for stuff all of the time. It's, it's like there was a big dam that you never knew was there 
um, and of, of things that people really do quite value, importantly, but they never seem to have told anyone about, or at least nobody was listening. So um, what we also had to do, as, as well as doing all of the engagement, is start to understand how we were going to... Um, uh, how we were going to actually deal with this big list of things that people were asking for. It wasn't appearing on project lists anywhere. Um, and, um, you know, it's a whole variety of things. It's new software, it's software changes, improved and fixed infrastructure, specialist equipment, down to process definition. And uh, we don't do this well enough. How are we going to, how are we going to resolve it? The sort of examples, is the, the, the diversity of things we come across. Um, the underwater web webcam in Plymouth Sound that actually streams, uh, streams the activities of fish directly to the internet is something, the sort of thing uh, that, that we, we would get involved with. Um, something called an animatage table, which will only be familiar to anyone working with a medical school, which is basically a massive touchscreen Windows PC, flat, into which you can introduce and remove all sorts of uh, parts of the human body, uh, just a mere sweep, sweep of a gesture, or you can sort of lift it on its side and take a section. Get, you, get, you get involved in things like that. Um, uh, equipping an observation post at Dartmoor Zoo. Um, it, it's that sort of thing. The thing that, in the grand scheme of things, would never, would never be picked up. Um, I mean, there are more conventional things. You know, what about all the changes, the backlog of changes to the student record system? What about um, in the medical school, what about the, uh, looking at a review of its horribly complicated assessment processes and figuring out what can be done about it, it about how can we introduce better information security into certain areas of research. So it's a mixture of the weird and the more, con uh, uh, more conventional. So one of our, op the, the word opportunity is, is well, whether it's jargon or a euphemism, uh, I, I, I'm not sure, but um, it's, the, it's the term that we've introduced for that. And um, uh, in a sense, we started to collect so much that we had to, we had to do the IT team thing and introduce a new tool. So in, in this case, we've just adapted a, a cloud service called Pipedrive, uh, one of a, what you might call an inexpensive low-end CRM uh, uh, that, that actually um, enables us to collect various bits of information um, about the sorts of things that people are talking to us uh, about and then start to track what we're doing with it as well have a good record, make sure that if somebody asks about it when you're at a conference, for instance, that uh, somebody else can look and see what the latest position is and, and, and what some of the background is. So, so, so that's been um, uh, useful to us. And we, we, we've started to then figure out how, we, we've started to use this as the basis for pushing, and we're going to go back to the poster now, um, for pushing things through an opportunity life cycle. Um, and one... <laughs> One, you know, one of the things about this is, is, is occasionally within our IT team, we can be accused of, of selling out to the business and, and, and trying to bring in activity that we can't possibly support. But one of the things we try to do at the very start is actually spend more time than would normally be spent and, and provoke more time to be spent on understanding what people want and why and actually considering that in the round before we get to any sort of solutionizing or, 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 or anything like that. What is the business case? What's the urgency? What's the importance? Um, what, in outline, is the requirement? Is it really needed, or actually could you meet that need by something other than a, 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 an IT-based solution? And would that be better? And, and, and really, that's the start of a, 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 what, what you might call a managing expectations dialogue, which also says that uh, actually there's a, there, there's a limited bucket of resource here. Um, we, can't, we, we probably won't be able to do everything that you want when you want it, and part of the process to un is uh, to understand what's wanted most and make sure that there's a cast iron case for doing it before we even take it forward and develop um, uh, the options around solutions and, and, and so forth that we go further on to in, in, into the uh, um, uh, more into the cycle. Um, at this stage, there is a question about what we do at the moment that gets raised as well is we don't have business analysts in our team and we actually raise requests for business analysts later on in the process. That can be a bit of a problem when at the very start you're trying to understand the need, and I'm not sure we've quite solved that yet, but I'll come back to that um, in a bit. Um, so, explore. 
This is when we get other people involved um, from, from, from our teams. In particular, um, uh, we get the technical architects and to some extent uh, the, the enterprise architects. The technical architects sort of work with us on identifying possible solutions and the best way of resolving a particular requirement. The enterprise architects sit there and make sure it's compliant um, and, and fits in with overall strategies. If that's relevant, they may say, actually, it doesn't, it doesn't matter that much. Um, again, another problem we've got is that a lot of what we get asked for is changes to things we already have. Um, and technical architects aren't necessarily the best people to identify what those changes should be and how they could best be done. We need to go out to people in solution delivery who may develop and support an application or service management who look after a particular set of servers or service to understand that. Um, that can cause, and it did certainly at first, cause delay and tension for us because somehow the architects felt that they were, the, they were best placed to provide that advice. People out in, in, in other teams were saying, well, that's ridiculous. Um, the most pragmatic place to go is to us. We're starting to try and balance that through, but it, 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 is, it is a problem with the process. Develop. Things are taking shape now. Uh, it's not necessarily as formal as all of this, technical architecture, approval board, uh, technical architecture board approval and things like that, but documentation does appear at this stage in particular, um, and that's part of the record of, 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 of therefore, what, what, what we're going through. The, the other thing is, going back to the previous point about dialogue with other teams, if you haven't got right that earlier, that right earlier, this is sort of when it tends to go more wrong uh, in terms of conflicting recommendations and uh, preciousness sometimes, but also some people going, going down blind alleys. So you can see that, you know, because I keep mentioning it, you can see this is a bit of a problem. Um, and, and, and it's something we're working, we have to work quite hard practically, and I'll come on to that again in a minute. Confirm. Um, when we're doing this work, we're trying to keep our customer or stakeholder informed at all stages. But you kind of, when you get to, to the, to, to the um, stage where you're going to propose a solution, you really have to quite deliberately go back to them at that stage to make sure that we haven't mangled the original request beyond all recognition and destroyed all the benefit and value that we um, uh, identified at the start. Because there is a danger and that does happen at times. And if that's the case, then we need to go, we need to cycle it right back um, to the start at that point. Implementation. Great, wonderbar. We, you know, we, we've, we've confirmed with the customer that that's what they want. We, um, we, we, you know, we take the fully formed, architecturally compliant, benefit assured request to the technical teams who are eagerly waiting the, uh, to do the work that we've so cleverly identified. They're going to thank us for that. What are they doing while we're doing all of this? Well, for solution delivery, for instance, since 2013 and ongoing, it's been all about big projects, big, big projects, and lots of them. And they're still doing them. So a whole new VLE um, actually implemented uh, uh, last year, um, complete rebuild of that. Um, a CRM project. We uh, are just about to complete phase two of our CRM project. The business case for phase three is being, being prepared. And of course, CRM projects are always so easy, aren't they? Um, we've, we've snuck in um, at one point, again, a whole new um, website and uh, underlying uh, uh, infrastructure for that and a whole new set of processes around that. Um, we're currently working on an inf uh, implementation of Office 365 for staff, all that goes around that. We're in the process of replacing AV throughout the whole campus and campuses uh, elsewhere in the southwest. And we're introducing lecture and content capture um, at the same time. We're just about, um, we, we, we're just about to implement, uh, uh, replace our whole network. And at the same time, we're discussing what we do about the future of our data centers and how we're going to replace um, uh, services and equipment that's now reaching, re reaching the end of life. These projects keep coming back for more phases, more resource. So solution delivery aren't doing very much. Service management. Well, what are they doing? Well, um, they've been uh, implementing an IT service management tool and everything that goes with that. 
upping standards in terms of frontline support, introducing processes around standard service requests, change management, problem management, all of those good little things. Um, they've introduced proactive um, solar winds, proactive um, uh, um, system monitoring across the whole estate so that we, we can hopefully see things going down before uh, other people notice it, which is one of our uh, sort of traditional uh, uh, failings before that. Um, and yeah, we're looking to improve fixed times on faults. They're accepting new systems into service at the same time. Working with those projects, you'll notice some of them that had a big infrastructure implication. Working with all those projects and project teams, providing resource to them to make sure that those new projects are a success. And of course, they're waiting for customer business, uh, business ch uh, change requests as well, eagerly. They're, 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 you know, they're, they're looking forward to that and they've made space for it. Not only that, what have they been doing for the last three years? Like all good IT teams, um, they've been adopting frameworks and methodologies to actually improve the way that we do things. So those teams are doing all of those projects, they're doing all of that service improvement, and they're implementing and adopting all of this method and approach continuously for three years without a pause. Um, but it's good that we want them to do something else as well. So what's, le what's the problem? Well, what we've got and what we found was that the, and this is just a representation from pipe drive of a really, really large backlog of things that people want that weren't otherwise registering with the IT organisation. And what that was doing, and the fact that that, certainly in the time when I first came into this role, at first, in particular, we weren't seeing any reduction of that backlog. It was just growing and growing all of the time. Things were ageing. They were becoming points of contention. And what, what we therefore saw is that um, although our IT organisation as a whole was delivering, as you saw, loads of good stuff, big projects, things like that, people still seemed unhappy. What, the, what we, the BPs, were able to say is one of the, one of the reasons, the main reasons they're unhappy is all of the other stuff is falling between the cracks. Um, maybe they haven't really done a very good job of talking to us about it up to now, but actually now we've got this information, we've got to try and resolve that because in terms of perception um, of the IT function, it was causing a real problem. It, what it tended to do was bleed into the projects so that the the, if you like, um, bad feeling generated by lack of key, every, well, as far as they saw it, key things, but were everyday things and perhaps not individually significant on the IT department's uh, radar, meant that then they took a different attitude to uh, other work. If, if you like, the cumulative value of all of this really affected stakeholder perce uh, perception uh, out of all apparent sort of proportion to its, its, its value and, and, and role. <clears throat> now, the question is, um, how do you take account of this? Um, you're going to talk about portfolio management, I think, in one of the crowdfunding uh, sessions tomorrow, and that may be one of the challenges, is, is how do you balance these things where, where, where um, typically programmes in organisations and, and maybe even portfolios tend to focus on the very big picture uh, or the very big ticket um, uh, items, but actually there's a continuum of things that... that, 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 that um, uh, cause a problem if you don't if you, if you ignore it. So what did we do? Yep, we decided to have a meeting, um, and it's it's about it, it. I mean, it kind of relates to something that Steve was talking about stand-up meetings earlier. Um, this isn't a stand-up meeting; it happens once a week, um, but it happens without fail at eleven o'clock on Tuesday. Um, we had some difficulty at first, but also each team that's represented, and that's strategy and architecture, uh, solution delivery, service management, and actually the project management office got involved as well uh, on, on, on a wider basis. Um, each team has to be represented, and it has to be represented meaningfully. No sending a poor, unbriefed stooge um, into, the, into the work allocation, uh, work advisory board. Um, so it, 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 do, it, does, it meets in that way. I chair it. It happened yesterday. I was, I was on my way up here. It, ju it just does. Um, it looks... Its primary role is to look at the scheduling of items that have reached the top 
um, of, of the list and have reached that, gone past that confirmed stage and are ready for implementation. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. In some ways, um, you know, the, the prioritisation and the business urgency and importance have already been established um, and it's a matter of then understanding the resource, resource constraints. Um, and and work, some resource, some notional resource has been set aside from each team for this process. It's not that much, but the, the, they've been mandated to provide a certain amount. And that's, sorry, that's an important point um, I forgot. That goes with the meeting. It's about managing how that resource is delivered. So in terms of how things are scheduled to start with as they emerge, and then to track the process, um, uh, uh, you know, and, and once they're scheduled to say, how far are we? How are we doing in terms of delivery? So you can see here that we've been using Trello, another tool, um, another technique tick box in, 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 in its sort of Kanban-ness. Um, we've been using that to, to actually track things through, look at, look at things by team, look at uh, 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 where things move. So if you reflect on that, what do, what do we think we've actually achieved um, in the, the last probably about eight to ten months that we've been operating this? Well, as I've indicated earlier, actually the meeting itself is important. You know, we joke, another meeting. But actually what it does is it, it, it sort of, we still have deadly standoffs about certain items. Um, we still do not entirely agree all the time about priority and about where the resource should be coming from. But actually we do every week sit down and talk about it. Um, and we've made um, a lot of process, uh, a lot of progress as a result. Yeah, you know, there are fewer deadly standoffs. The PMO, who, whose um, role at the start of the board was essentially as a peacemaker, um, have now felt the ability to withdraw their troops um, because, because we're able to broadly speaking, agree on things every week, and if not, sort it out amongst ourselves. Um, so they've been able to roll in that. And as I said earlier, looking at the calendar, it takes place every week. It keeps happening. I think, you know, as we said with a standoff, stand-up, the regularity, the discipline of that is important. It's a bit like, um, I don't know if anyone in a project uses show-and-tell meetings um, to customers, fortnightly show-and-tell meetings on the progress of the, pro uh, the project. Sometimes the project manager comes back and says, nothing much has happened. And the discipline is you have to go out and tell people that nothing much has happened in, in, in that last two weeks. The discipline to keep reporting and keep talking, you know, and not to be able to opt out um, from, uh, uh, from time to time. Um, you know, as I said earlier, the, 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 um, you know, there is now uh, no tolerance of total absence for a team uh, at the meeting. Um, and also, you know, certainly the BP team has a pre-meeting every week, making sure that we've got our ducks in a row for opportunities that we've been working on. Does it all make sense? Will anybody be able to pull this apart? Um, have we done, have we got all the necessary requirements information? We probably also are having informal conversations with um, the development manager from solution delivery and, and, and people from service management as well to make sure that they understand the background and are not going to dig their heels in unnecessarily when they see, when they see something coming in. So the meeting causes a whole set of other things to happen that means that this work starts to move. And it is moving. Um, the graphs in the middle of the slide are from our report to our sort of technology and information services SLT meeting. We do that monthly now. We look at, we, we, it's our justification of our use of that resource that's been set aside. Uh, the numbers could be better. Um, and we're looking to drive, uh, to drive that up to make sure that, for instance, the BPs we make sure that we're not having things l sort of lingering in our, uh, in our uh, pipeline using lack of resource as an excuse. We, we actually make sure that things are moved forward and that, that, that we consider things. Also, when you're looking at the, um, at the, you know, the, the further down the report, there are uh, graphs around slippage against original scheduled deadlines, uh, deadlines uh, as well. And, and, and there, is still a fair, there is still quite a lot of that, but actually, Starting to do that and starting to take a rolling three-month approach means that we're, you know, that, that, as I say, that bit of resource has been set aside. We're making sure that we keep the argument for keeping it set aside and we're showing our management team um, uh, the value from it. And personally, and this is a really big thing for me, it means that I can go into big meetings with my stakeholders as the slightly spray 
sprayed out report shows here on the right hand side and actually show progress. I get shouted at less um, than, than, than I did before um, and it means that we, we, we can do things, move on, get a bit more credibility, actually get people to talk to us more about things rather than literally want to do them, uh, things themselves. Uh, uh, themselves. What do we need to work on? There's still a lot, really, in all honesty. Um, top left there, um, you've already seen screenshots of three tools. There are more than that in use um, uh, to operate this process and things related to it. And, and, and what we can't get away from is the fact that we're still knocking together um, de developing tools and processes from several teams that have emerged over the last three years. Um, and it's a little bit cumbersome, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, we've got, we, we, we have to key things in several times. Um, we have to go and find out from, from different teams what their resource plan is related to a certain, uh, a certain item. And it makes that reporting that we looked at in the last slide more difficult. The whole thing needs to come together, but it's difficult to actually uh, um, uh, resolve that without really looking more holistically at the processes that all the teams are following in the process and actually considering, uh, you know, it might happen, considering how we can actually have a single process and maybe, I'm not sure we'll, e we'll end up with one tool, but certainly few, many fewer tools than we use at the moment to record and re-record uh, aspects of the work that we're doing. Looking at the calculator and the pen, showing my age. Um, estimating and resource planning. One of the things, if nothing else, in the last three years that we've learnt, uh, learnt is that we're not very good at estimating. Consistently over-optimistic, consistently underrating the complexity of, 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 of what we're doing. So even when I think we're doing a better job of raising requests, getting them on the agenda, prioritising them, tracking them, we're still tending to slip. A lot of that, that's partly um, around the discipline of estimating. It's, it's also partly a challenge back to us as, as the business partners to make sure that the requirements that we supply are better developed maybe than they have been sometimes in the past, that we've picked up the nuances and the variations and that we really understand it. Um, but it's also about the fact that we've got little, a little notional parcel of resource. You saw the diversity of the things we asked for. That's not actually dealt with by the number of people, individual people that that, 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 that resource is uh, sort of taken from. It, we need to, the, the development uh, delivery manager in solution delivery, the team leaders in uh, service management need to pull all sorts of different expertise, um, different people, different skills, different knowledge. It's difficult, um, and it's difficult to estimate when people can do things when you're having to draw on all of those those different people with, 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 with different timescales and priorities. Um, going back up here, and, and, and I didn't steal this from uh, Steve's slide pack, honestly, business analysis, sort of referred to it earlier. Um, the way it works at the moment is the business analysts sit in solution delivery, and we actually ask for business analysis as a request. Um, that's sort of fine, but it does mean that our ability right back, if you remember that understand stage, that our ability right back there to, to do things well and understand them first time is inhibited because when it's speculative, we don't have the resource to, to, um, to, to draw on. Now, whether, that's, whether there's a structural issue there, um, although all of the business analysts are pretty fully occupied anyway with, with, with other things at the moment, whether we need to change the emphasize, emphasis of what we do in the team to put more into making sure we understand requirements in a bit more detail, I'm not sure, but that's certainly an issue that we have to do, is how do we more flexibly draw on or, or, or get the capability to, to do a bit more analysis sooner in the process. And finally, um, <coughs> and it's a little bit of a when in doubt, choose a word map. Um, governance, um, this, this kind of relates to something that's cropping up a lot, is that the business partners, we, we, we have individual stakeholders, we talk to, to individuals, groups of people in sort of parts of the university. The difficulty is that we're representing their individual preferences um, and their personal, their, their, their sort of zonal priorities. Um, 
And for some things, that doesn't always work too well if you don't have a wider conversation with the rest of the university about it. So I think there are some key areas where um, we, 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 we need to do a bit more, we need to get a bit more prioritisation actively and authoritatively from, the, from, from other parts of the university rather than just acting on conversations with individual schools or faculties. The sort of areas that, 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 that are particularly biting are, I talked about changes to student record systems or, or, or around enrolments, fees, um, assessment uh, board reporting and things like that. Um, we probably need to get an element of validation, discussion and agreement from those communities of administrators and, and, and academics. Uh, changes to the uh, teaching and learning systems and Moodle uh, would be another one where if we want to make changes, how do we make sure outside of our IT environment that A, we're doing the right thing and we're doing them in the right order in those particular areas. So I think what we need is a network of groups, uh, you know, authorised groups, who can actually help us make those decisions rather than us try and make them on, on our own. I think for the smaller, more localised things, we do quite well, um, but certainly we need to, we need to cause those, those, those things to be in place um, for, um, for, for, for quite where, wide areas of activity, actually. <clears throat> so finally, I've got here without too many coughs. Um, so, I, I suppose one of the wider questions around what I've just discussed is through our attempt to um, set up a business engagement function to, to actually engage more actively with, with the university, understand them, we, we, we've come up with a bit of a problem. And I don't know whether it's a, and it's, it's almost like this is starting to issue the question outwards, whether it's a, an inbuilt problem with IT departments that actually we tend to focus on the big things. Um, we, we look at what the big ticket items are, are going to be in our programme, what big systems and, 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 and new services are we, go, are we going to do. We also tend to, to, you know, we have service management teams that focus on, rightly, on delivering a good service, improving that service all the time, making sure the experience of what people are using today is as good as it could be. <coughs> But actually, there's a, there's the third, there is a third element. There is this sort of element of what's seen as a con continuum of small to medium-sized change um, that doesn't figure, perhaps, in conversations at your uh, vice chancellor's exec group or anything like that. But actually, in faculties in in, in areas, is is cumulatively very uh, uh, very uh, very important. So, um, and to some extent, that conversation is happening at Plymouth at the moment in terms of that overall picture of resourcing and, 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 and priority management. We've got a, um, a new wider uh, sort of governance group looking at the allocation of IT resources and it's looking at those, those different le levels. So I'd be interested, I'm obviously interested in your questions and, and to see maybe how, where you are, because I'm guessing various people are at some stage or other in this process, I in your own institutions. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thanks, David. Uh, a great uh, presentation, and uh, I'm sure we'd all agree with you that relationships are at the heart of um, reconciling uh, supply and demand, you know, what we can do for, 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 for the people who employ us. Um, do you ever worry that having um, the business relations function actually generates more demand than you can satisfy and therefore disturbs you know, it raises expectations yeah. unrealistically. Um, in, in a business context, if you drum up more business, that's great because you get more money. Yeah. Whereas here, you're generating demand against a fixed, a finite resource to deliver. Yes, we do. <laughs> um, and, and certainly, you know, I, I talked about some of the training we had from I, I, IBM, uh, former IBM sales professionals um, and some of the processes that they were suggesting to us. And a lot of the discussion then hinged around that point, that, that this isn't about generating as much re revenue as possible. This is about actually um, identifying those things that will have maximum impact for the university within the, if possible, within the existing envelope um, of resource uh, that the IT, IT team has to provide challenge and, you know, and that we do do that with our customers. We don't always just say, yes, we'll do that. Thank you very much. 
um, to provide some challenge and, and make sure that saying, do you, really, you know, do you really want to do that? It, could you not just do that another way and uh, make suggestions? That's one way of doing it. And the other thing increasingly that's happened um, is also coming up with ways in which you can have those conversations to, where, where, where you say, well, actually, I don't think we can just resource that. Um, but it's important to you and your area, is there another way of getting that resourcing? So um, one example recently is um, our medical school, as they all do, has a number of its own systems. They wanted a lot of work done on one of their assessment systems. So we'd had the, er the awkward early part of the conversation where I just don't think we can schedule this at the moment, given the, 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 the workload that's going on. But actually... If, you were able to, to, if we were able to work out what the highest value items in your backlog were um, and we could estimate how much time it would take for us to bring a contractor in, which you might fund, in order to achieve this work in this time scale, um, then if you, can, if you can start to open questions like that, and of course you need rich faculties like medical schools to, 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 to do that, but, but if you can start those conversations, that actually... Um, sort of mitigates that sort of effect that you're talking about. The other thing is something that's, that's around the technology environment that we're in now as opposed to five or ten years ago, um, and I'm going to use it because it's my area, I'm going to use it as an example, is when people want to do things, does the IT team always have to do it? Do we always have to host it? Does it create another server? Do we, can we not just identify uh, a, a possible solution, a solution that can be hosted elsewhere, uh, with a minimal amount potentially of integration work, but then only if it's necessary. Um, and can we actually, in effect, become, I mean, and our, one of our buzzwords at the moment is intelligent customer on behalf of um, that faculty, broker a solution, make sure that they're doing it in a sensible way rather than going off themselves and doing it and falling into various tracks, helping them manage contracts with suppliers, helping them do a bit of integration, making sure that they work methodically through how they implement and use the system, and making sure that we're coming back and looking at that contract and looking at the way it's working um, uh, every year. So I think it's, a ver it's by be being realistic to start with and then trying to deploy a number of possible options in the way that you offer things to people that, 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 that may get around that problem. But it is a problem. Okay. Hi, Martin Rapier from the University of Sheffield. Um, we, we face exactly the same challenges as you in terms of prioritising the backlog of smaller yeah. developments against big project work and coming up with a process for allocating resource. And I think like you, I've come to the conclusion that the only way to do it is explicitly set resource aside to do that. Um, so on a purely practical level, what, what, what kind of level of allocatable resource have, have, have you given to this at Plymouth? For this process at the moment, it's, only, it's, it's in any given week, it's normally four FTE. That's well, it. What's that as a percentage of your overall? Um, it's probably it's probably no more than about four percent. Okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, yeah, you know that's where I think we've we, we, we've got a way to go yet. That's partly down with us, the business partner team. Mm -hmm. I think what I think in the early stages there was an element of um, Pavlov's dog, in as much as we'd got used to teams not being able to do things for us. Therefore, we tended to hold back um, on things um, and, and, and sort of, you know, manage that, but, but it led to a bit of pent-up demand. I think we're ready to not quite open the floodgates, but actually sort of make the case now to say there's actually more work here. Is 4FTE enough? Where does that sit within the balance? But that, that might come into this wider conversation about resource allocation as a whole. Mark Lewis from the University of Aberdeen. Um, one of the challenges we're facing is on prioritization of work. So yeah. what criteria have you been using to prioritize work? Are you using financial return on investment? And how are you, it's easy to calculate the costs, but how are you turning the, calculating the benefits in financial terms? Um, I think it's fair to say that we don't, probably don't really use return on investment for work at the sort of scale that I'm talking about in the web some of the bigger projects we do, um, uh, then, then that, that'll certainly be done. We, we, we've kept it a bit simpler and cruder for the minute, and that's partly um, because, because of the fil filtration mechanisms that we have to operate. So I mentioned urgency and importance. We, ha we have a big concept with these pieces of work is 
does it have an actual business deadline? Um, and what's the impact of, of not doing it? And we, we just rate that on a, one t a simple T-shirt sort of uh, size basis uh, at, at the moment. Um, one of the things we do is, and it's quite interesting when you do do it, is when people, when you, when you say, well, what's your actual business deadline? When does this have to be done by? Um, people will just say a date. Um, and it doesn't necessarily really have a deadline. That's the date they'd like it by. So this is, this is one of those areas where you have to have, you have to manage the conversation in a particular way that says, yeah, but really, um, I, again, I imagine Steve having this sort of conversation. Yes, but when, 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 when will it happen? And, you know, and what will be the consequence of, of, not, doing, uh, of not doing this? And it, we, we then rate it T-shirt size, which will be large as university-wide impact, uh, a, a university bu business affecting impact. Um, and then normally um, w the, the second one will be localised impact, a negative impact on, on business. And then the third one is basically, and it's crude at the moment, but it's, it's failure to enhance the business um, I I in a certain area. So not, frankly, as sophisticated uh, as the sort of measures that you're talking about. Those tend to apply to the larger projects at the moment. Whether we'll get to that with the small to medium-sized work. Incidentally, one of the other things I didn't mention is that nothing that is authorised through this mechanism can, be, can take uh, totally more than 28 um, working days um, to, uh, to be done. It goes into a, se a separate process, project process, if not. Hello, um, I'm Mary Hill from Sheffield Hallam. You've just sort of preempted my question oh, there, right. which is quite good. Because um, my question was very simple. Um, is are you and your business partner colleagues the main channel through which IT-related requests come? Uh, do you have other channels? And I'm, you know, even thinking about your IT help desk. Um, yep. <laughs> We've got other ways of doing it, which is both a blessing and a curse. Um, uh, we, th th there are higher-level discussions which form the wider, stra wider strategy in the big-ticket uh, uh, items. And um, I think it's fair to say that those higher level items haven't really, um, the, the strategic planning and the business planning process at Plymouth has been not totally effective in the, in the last couple of years for a variety of reasons. So there's some work going on at the moment to actually do that. What, the problem we get is um, uh, things, what, what you might call missiles or bombs coming from above. So we can have caref carefully worked through a set of uh, processes where we've been talking to people and then all of a sudden somebody says, for instance, um, we want, uh, um, we've got to have uh, student electoral registration um, in place in the next three weeks. And then that, that's going to throw a disruptor in. So we still get disruptors uh, at that level coming into this process. But we try and at least reflect them in the process and we try and show to the extent to which if that gets delivered, that may have the highest priority, but other things have to move as a result. The other thing is we, we've discovered, a, a, and I think smart people at the university have discovered that through the change process in raising service desk calls, they could quite often get little bits of work done um, without, without people realising. What we're now doing is working with the change management team in service management to actually, they're filtering what they're doing and making sure it gets passed back. So, so yet yeah, there are different ways, but we're trying to actually manage that. So ideally, there we go. So ideally, you do want all IT-related requests to come through your team. Um, not necessarily, because I think there are things that are, you know, there, there are standard service requests. There are changes which perhaps involve, for instance, allocation of storage space and things like that, up, up to a certain point that don't, but, but I'm, and I'm not sure where the right balance is, um, you know, between catching enough and making sure it's prioritised and then not overbalancing us completely as a team. But, but you know, we're actively trying to manage that. 